All right, everybody, this is my attempt in Kerbal Space Program to launch to orbit and safely return a, well, relatively safely return a space shuttle-like orbiter that is lighter in mass than uh, the mini shuttle launched by Shadow Zone in his recent uh, tiny shuttle video where he beats his own previous record of a, a tiny space shuttle. His latest one, the orbiter weighed 709 kilograms with a launch vehicle of 19,293 kilograms. My space shuttle, being launched now on screen, is 336 kilogram orbiter or 218 kilogram without payload with a 12,576 kilogram uh, total mass for the launch vehicle with payload and everything. So, as you can see on screen, it is being launched. For a second there, you might have noticed that I accidentally cut my throttle to zero for a while, so I'm sure I sacrificed some Delta V for that silly mistake. Uh, but either way, I still managed to pull this off somehow. This was not anything close to my first try. It was uh, very difficult to do. So, and not difficult in any weird way. It's, it's difficult in the means that it's such a little thing, and the, I mainly had problems with the orbiter. I could get it to orbit just fine. Or getting to orbit wasn't the problem. It was coming back, trying to aim to actually land at the space center, which I managed to do a couple of times, uh, several times actually. But the original design, the orbiter was did not have enough lift whatsoever. So I, I doubled down on some of the the basic wings or whatever they're called, and. Uh, now it has plenty of lift, a decent glide ratio, and a pretty low stall speed, which was very helpful considering the landing gear setup on this thing. With tandem gear, um, not very stable. Although very stable because of the reaction wheel, but still, you couldn't really veer off to either side or roll. You still had to be pretty conscious about what you're doing on landing. Otherwise, you might roll and you know hit a, ring, a wing against the ground and uh, that wouldn't be good. I did that once and uh, that was one of the tries that did not make the final cut if you know what I mean. Anyways here we are getting out to the top of our orbit. We're gonna circularize here pretty soon. Now I did notice that Oftentimes, this launch vehicle had plenty of fuel left, and by plenty I mean not very much fuel left, but still a little bit of extra fuel to spare. Uh, I believe in this try, this attempt, uh, it did have a little bit of extra fuel. So that's always helpful to have extra margins, and still be underneath the weight of the sh shuttle orbiter that I was trying to beat. Now. A little bit of a difference between this and the Shadow Zone spacecraft is that this uses the main booster almost the entire trip. And even in this cut, it takes even, even more of the trip. I purposefully did not decouple the orbiter from the main booster until it was entering the atmosphere. and. I did that just to ensure that I had the best accuracy possible so I could actually make it to the space center. Uh, I could have added a small engine, a little bit of fuel to the orbiter, but even the smallest fuel tank is uh, too big. It would just look wonky being on the orbiter. I mean, you just see this huge fuel tank, even though the tiny Oscar B fuel tank, the little silver one, is still small but it's still big compared to the orbiter anyways here we are deploying the payload because you don't just launch it into space for no reason uh, there's a you know, orbiter with a little bit of payload capacity so there went, there went that little microsat coming around here for the deorbit burn which is be coming pretty soon here 
I like the burn around that little peninsula, the brown sort of sand peninsula over there. I find that's a pretty good spot. Coming up for our final burn, there it goes. And I'm gonna try to fine tune the trajectory here to make it down into, uh, into the space center, which I just happened to perfectly do this time after I don't know how many tries just see the satisfying satisfying re-entry here you'll see in a minute alright and here you see me refusing to couple the, uh, the orbiter from the main booster until the last minute here had to make sure my trajectory was on point then I released that now the original orbiter had more weight and less lift uh, it had pretty much not half almost half of the wingspan or wing space wing area that's the right term wing area as this one did. Half the wing area of this and uh, I believe a lot more than double the weight because I had xenon gas and I had a small ion engine which although little and lightweight this whole thing is lightweight so just that pretty much doubled the mass if not more. I mean there's a lot of mass that I shed from this. So then I, I the original launch vehicle had to have two more boosters, two more SRBs than this one did. And it just looked kind of stupid. So this one I liked a lot better. More wing area and less weight, better glide ratio. And this, you can actually land this. The other thing you could not glide. Uh, you would just bleed off all your speed and it, it just fell like a rock. Now this one comparatively is a championship glider compared to the other one but even this doesn't have a great glide ratio and because it's so small there's no room for control surfaces so I just used the reaction wheel instead and although it adds weight probably more than control surfaces would it is very much worth it because you just get that insane controllability uh, without any of the complicated complexity of uh, having a large control surface on this tiny, tiny little orbiter. Anyways, here we are on final, about 80 degrees of uh, descent. Pretty typical if you ask me. Uh, this is what I do in my Cessna, so that, you know, basically the same shit. Alright, coming in, runway 9 here. And you'll notice this is the tandem gear setup. The original orbiter only had one gear, uh, but that I couldn't get that to work. Uh, it, it, the balance it could balance fine, but there just wasn't enough clearance for uh, like I would tail strike or I would hit the nose on something on landing. But there's that, and there it is, just keeping level. And then I'm gonna employ my little technique that I learned a few attempts ago and uh, actually click on the Kerbal and try and deploy the parachute here. Here I mouse over the brakes, but then I remember this thing doesn't have brakes. Uh, so the only real way to get it to stop is to deploy the parachute and sort of nose back like that. And if you don't do the parachute and you just nose back, the wheels are gonna glitch out and it's gonna be weird. Either way, we're on the ground now. Safe and sound, Valentina has made it. And that is the extremely lightweight micro shuttle that is lighter than shadow zones he was the inspiration behind this video so if for some reason you haven't seen his channel it'll be linked in the description a great channel and that's all for today see you guys next time <laughs>